Hello everyone. Um, hi, I'm Mukul, and I'm here with my friend and colleague Rakesh. Uh, we both work at Cloudera, and uh, we have been working on Apache Ozone for last couple of years. And today we'll be talking about how did we develop a high-performance object store uh, on Ozone, and how is it really optimized to run analytics-like workloads. Okay, uh, so let's quickly go through the agenda. So uh, we will be covering a few things in here. We will start with the overview of Ozone, and then how we have architected it. What are the uh, some of the important pieces of Ozone, and uh, then we would specifically be going into the performance aspect on how Ozone becomes uh, a high performance object store. So we'll be talking about how we implemented atomic renames and deletes. And then we would specifically be going uh, into some of the performance benchmarks, uh, where we would present uh, some of the micro benchmark as well as more application-based benchmarks as well. Okay, let's start with the architecture. So, uh, I mean, uh, for those of you who do not know, Ozone is an object store, and we, uh, the most of the people who had worked on Ozone were were earlier working on HDFS. So we have learned about the problems uh, which we had with HDFS and we have tried to solve them uh, that those with Ozone. And uh, so Ozone has been developed ground up from to work with big data applications. So it has been uh, been working with applications like Spark, Hive and Kafka from the day one. Uh, some of the primary goals of developing Ozone was to go beyond the scalability limits of HDFS main mode. So uh, we provide I mean, uh, significant scalability improvement when compared to HDFS name node in terms of storage capacity as well as IOPS. Uh, we provide Cerberus security, which is uh, which is the same as how Hadoop security looks like. We are fault tolerant, so you can fail any of the master nodes as well as the data nodes, and the system self corrects itself. And then uh, uh, we uh, we have provided ease of administration. And this ease of administration is provided using a utility called Recon, and we'll be talking about that later on. Uh, Ozone has been designed to be multi-protocol to start with. So uh, we support currently S3 protocol as well as the Hadoop compatible file system, but the protocol, uh, but the whole system can be changed and to add a, as many protocols later on as we need it. Uh, so I've already co covered some of the protocols in the previous section. But just quickly skimming through, uh, another thing which I would like to call out is just like the HDFS name node, we can also support the RPC client as well as uh, we can also, we also have plans of adding things like NFS and POSIX file system later on. Uh, another important thing to point out is that uh, right now everything runs on top of containers. So Ozone is also cloud native. And with cloud native, I mean it can run on top of Kubernetes and we actually use it to test our system. Uh, apart from that, Ozone volumes can also be exposed inside Kubernetes containers, and where where the the application running inside Kubernetes can write to Ozone as well. Okay, so uh, going a little bit more into the architecture, right? About what are the moving components? So uh, I'll start from the right. Uh, so if you would see on the right, you have something called the Ozone Manager. Ozone Manager is our namespace manager, and this actually manages the name to block map mapping. So anytime you create a file or you want to do a listing of the of the files in uh, in the system, this is basically all of your calls go, and this is all this is where the name metadata is. Um, below that, you have something called the Storage Container Manager. The Storage Container Manager is your block space manager, and it takes care of things like the cluster membership basically if you lose a node and uh, if we want to do replication that's basically what storage container manager is offering and the storage container manager and ozone manager talk to each other via a protocol where they only talk about block information so storage container manager has no information about what is the name of the files which are stored inside those blocks and we have designed it in such a way so that each of the components, the namespace and the block space, can be scaled independently of the other service. In HDFS, both of these were monolithic and were inside one single name node. And we have tried to uh, break that monolithic architecture and make these two separate uh, 
I mean processes, so that each one of them can be scaled irrespective to each other. And the data nodes, even though ozone data nodes are are different than HDFS data nodes, they are in theory very similar to how HDFS data nodes behave. Uh, but I mean, uh, obviously, uh, I mean we are writing the data differently a little in here. And, and on the right, we have something called the recon server. The recon server is an administrative utility. And the recon server keeps getting um, all the real time updates from each one of these uh, demons which are running. Uh, and this would give us uh, fine grained analytic information on things like what is the average size of the file? Uh, how many data nodes do I have? Uh, so what are among, how, among those data nodes, how many are getting decommissioned? How many are really active? And so it, it is really an offline process. Which does not, which is not in the IO path, and gives you all the information about uh, how the system is behaving. And uh, the reason we have developed this also is is from our learnings with HDFS. In HDFS, we had seen that the name node also answers administrative queries, which wasn't really the need. And that's the reason we have designed Recon to be a external process. Now, coming to the left, we have the access points on how we can access the zone. So if you would see, we have got the ozone file system connector at the top, and that, that's one of the methods of talking to ozone. We also have the CLI shell. The CLI shell uh, is just like Hadoop command line, and the C CLI shell can again be used to talk to ozone manager or storage container manager. At the bottom is what uh, is our rest endpoint or what we, uh, or how we can talk S3. So S3 gateway servers is basically when how users could talk to zone via uh, HTTP protocol. Okay. So that's pretty much how, what are the pieces are. Uh, now, now let's, I mean, quickly go to some more details about the overview, right? So here, if you would see, uh, we have the ozone manager, which is the namespace manager. It manages quotas, actors, user permits, and some of these things. Right? Uh, the uh, storage container manager uh, manages the block cluster membership replication rate. Right? Now, the data node uh, is, as I've said, is similar to HDFS data node. The biggest different difference is that in the ozone data node, we actually make use of something called, uh, uh, something of storage container. And a storage container is actually uh, a group of blocks. Rather than just writing one block directly to the data node, we actually write the data to a container. And a container can actually be imagined as a group of blocks. And this really helps us in solving the small file problem because rather than reporting each and every individual block to the name node individually, we report them uh, them as a combined entity. Uh, Recon, we have already covered enough detail. Also, I mean, uh, some of our most important building blocks are industry known, uh, I mean, uh, pieces. So we use Raft for implementing HA. We have, we are using RockDB to store metadata, which provides the scalability. And we are using BRPC and Netty for uh, for the data pro, uh, transfer. And then we also support the Hadoop security model, which uh, helps it integrate in the uh, big data world in a secure manner. Okay, so again, this is again uh, the previous slide, uh, but in a little bit more detail on how the access points look like. So if you would see uh, on the left, we have the S3 index. So basically, all of your S3 commands come that way. And they go to the S3 gateway. Then you can also access Ozone via the S3 browser as well as using a Kubernetes container over S3. And on the right, you have the traditional big data workflows. So applications like Hive, Spark, and Flink, they can actually talk to Ozone via the Hadoop compatible file system. And then we have Ozone setting right in the middle. Okay, now I'll be uh, handing over to my friend Rakesh, who will be going into more details about how this uh, feature has been implemented. Yeah, thanks Mukul. Hello everyone. I'm going to talk about the, the file system optimization work that we have done in the Ozone storage system and makes it well suitable for the big data workloads. So this work is already available in the master branch and it will be it will be included in the upcoming releases. So before we talk about the Ozone, I would like to touch upon the Hadoop compatible file system API. This is most uh, commonly used 
API in the Hadoop system components, ecosystem components. And it has most of the, uh, the commonly used file system operations like creating a file, uh, creating a directory, deleting, renaming a file and directory and, and so on. So mostly this includes all the features that uh, HDFS offers. So now uh, the Hadoop ecosystem components can easily like uh, Hive, Spark, Impala, MapReduce can easily integrate with Hadoop compatible file system APIs uh, without worrying about the underlying storage system. Uh, the underlying storage system like Microsoft Azure, Amazon S3, they can write their own connectors and talk and convert uh, the data to their own fashion. So we have a basic Ozone file system implemented for the Ozone. And uh, big thanks uh, to Apache community, Hadoop community for the hard work. Yeah, now uh, if you look at the big data analytics tools like Hive, Impala, Spark, they often write output to temporary locations during the execution. And finally, it will be visible to the, uh, the job committers. So during the, the course of execution, directory rename, rename is a mechanism that uh, widely used uh, to, to complete, to, uh, to commit the work of a task or a job. So when you look at uh, the task execution, the task output will be returned to task attempt directories, and that is a temporary location. And once the task is done, it will be uh, a task is committed it will be moved to a job commit directories. Once the job is committed, all the task committed directories will get renamed to the final output destination directories. That's how the analytical tools handles the, the distributed workload. And now comes to the object store, how ob uh, the rename is handled in the object store. It is pretty simple way. They, they write a new key in the system and delete the original key. Let's imagine uh, there are millions of subfiles or temporary locations generated during the task execution. So we can see that it is it will be too expensive to list all the directories and delete all the original subdirectories and files, right? So now uh, if you look at the job committers of Hive, Spark, MR, we could see that they demands atomic rename and delete operation for the, the consistent listing operations. Also, it impacts the rename or the delete operation impacts the overall job performance. So now uh, we can take a quickly look on how uh, object object store a rename or how Ozone uh, handle the rename and delete. So the left hand side you can see this is the uh, uh, example file system namespace where we have three depth directory one slash directory two slash directory three under directory three there are millions of files in the system. So you can correlate this with the high workload, for example, there are these many millions of files generated during the task execution and the, the job execution. And when someone try to rename a particular temporary directory, for example, I'm, I'm going to rename directory one. So the entries in the RocksDB looks like this, right? So there are the prefix paths like volume slash bucket slash directory one, those get duplicated to all the files, a million files, right? It has to list all these files and then do update all the subdirectories and files in the system. So it will be a painful operation. So now comes to the, the Ozone file system optimization work that we have done. We have introduced a metadata layout format. There are two formats we have introduced. One is file system optimized format and which is purely HCFS semantics with limited S3 compatibility. And uh, the second one is object store, which is the traditional key value store format, pure S3 object store semantics. So I'll, I'll talk about uh, the internals of this in the next slides. Yeah, the first rectangle box, gray color box, that is the, the traditional object store looks like. For example, I'm going to create a file. It will have entries like directory one slash two slash three slash file one. There will be four entries in the system, right? Now, in the file system optimized mode, the green color rectangle box, you can see that we have borrowed some of the concept from the Unix directory table, and uh, we have splitted the key table into two parts, directory table and file table. So 
instead of keeping the the duplicated prefix what we have done is we have maintained a unique id we have used ratis transaction id to ensure the uniqueness and that will get prepended like 512 slash directory one and we'll be generating a specific object id for the directory one so when you create a directory two it will be creating another object id like 1025 and directory three has in this fashion and finally when i am going to create the file entry it will be put into a file table in this particular format now let's see how uh, what happens when somebody is trying to rename a directory one so here in this you can see uh, the 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 first row right 512 slash directory one it is pretty straightforward that i can rename the directory one underscore new to the first row and just update the rows db and we are able to complete in a, in a fraction of seconds milliseconds and we we have the complexity of order of one and all the sub files will automatically get renamed and for example if somebody is trying to list a directory one content it will do a top down parcel or traversal basically uh, so first it will identify the the directory one entry and find out what is the corresponding object id of directory one and then it will fetch next uh, 1024 slash directory two and then move on to directory three and then finally we'll go to the file table and list down all the million files so this is how the the listing operation happens in that case we have completely avoided the duplicate effort of updating all the keys like we saw in the previous diagram so the same thing happens uh, with delete operation as well. So let's say if somebody is going to delete a directory, say directory one, it's just again a simple one row updation, like 512 slash directory one will get completely removed. And now all the sub files and sub directories starting with the prefix 1024, that will become orphaned. Yeah, now come, comes to the S3 like object store, right? So how uh, the S3 like object store handles the rename that we saw, right? It, it does a copy and delete the original file. So let's imagine there are millions of files in the system. It has to perform all these operations one by one and that will definitely has very bad performance. So in that case, what we saw in our, our performance benchmark, we have outperformed the S3 like object store. And mostly we have done, we have seen that we have a deterministic performance number rather than uh, there are millions of subdirectories and sub files in the systems. And we have done a couple of micro benchmark using the, the famous DTSG ozone tool. So here the tool does it will create n number of directories and n number of uh, total uh, files in the system. So in the first row, you can see I have a 10 span. Uh, that means in a level, I, I'll be creating 10 directories and 10 files. And the depth I, I kept static, it has a three depth. So in the first row, when I execute the free on benchmark, it generates 300 directories and 600 files. And with the file system optimized, we could see that it finished in 21 milliseconds, but in the, in the object store, key value story, it took nearly two, two seconds. And now let's say if I keep on increasing the number of directories and number of files, you can see at the last row, ninth row, there are 24K directories and 49K files. It finishes in 63 milliseconds in the in the file system optimized mode, but in the object store, it took almost 167 seconds. So with that, what, what we can say that it has a consistent performance numbers. Also, it has advantage of the atomic atomicity guarantees. And the same thing happened during the directory deletion. So when I delete the root directory, what happens is the first row, we, we have, again, a smaller millisecond operations, but it took nearly 188 milliseconds. 
and if we move to the eighth row we could see we remain constant irrespective of the number of sub files and sub directories the main reason for the performance gain is we have only with the new file system layout we have only single rpc call to perform the rename and directory of uh, rename and delete operations but in case of object store layout there will be too many rpc calls pumped to the system and so there will be a lot of ios and, and disk ios and network calls and that actually degrade the performance of the object store system also we have done some high drop table comparison that we have done against hdfs so we could see that hdfs has uh, the query completion time which is less than a second now we have done a drop table of uh, catalog sales and which has around 5k sub files and sub, sub directories and hdfs finishes in a second and with the file system optimized layout we have also done in a second but if you see the object store layout it is a pure key value store there will be a lot of duplicate prefixes in the system right like we saw in the previous diagram and it has 12 seconds it took 12 seconds and under the hood what happens when you drop a table it performs a lot of rename operations uh, actually it, it will invoke a file system dot delete but internally what happens is it, it will move the data to table data to a trash obviously there are some improvement areas we have to do uh, like file creation and directory creations so we uh, we compared ourselves uh, ozone with obs and fso layout so what we could see is that obs is performing better than fso layout but there is a the minor performance gain it's not like a massive performance gain or degradation to the file system optimized layout so here we could see that when i am going to create a 500 550k directories it took 120 22 seconds but object store took only 112 seconds but when i am going to create 50k files the difference is 322 and 307 so this is an improvement area we have to do in the, in the file system optimized mode so our team is focusing on optimizing the performance in the next phase so basically the summary is so we are better than s3 like object store in terms of performance of the rename and delete operations also we guarantee the atomicity as hdfs so the now now the the job completion happens or the task completion happens it can provide a consistent view or consistent listing of directories irrespective of any any partial failures or or any other inconsistencies in the system so we provide a consistent view always also our performance is is the same order as hdfs so basically there are a lot of items to be covered in the future so we have a future roadmap of fso we are planning to move the layout to the bucket so that uh, a single OM can handle a multi-protocol behaviors. Like when I am going to create a bucket, I can specify that, hey, this bucket can be created in the file system optimized layout, or I can create a bucket in the object store layout. So a single OM can handle both the layouts together. And so the S3 client can talk to the S3 bucket layout and uh, traditional analytical big data tools like Hive or Spark, or typical MapReduce, Impala, they can talk to the Ozone manager in the HCFS Hadoop compatible file system manner using a FSO bucket layout. Another important thing is, like I said, we, we are doing a top-down traversal for the listing operation. So there are areas to improve the caching part. So we are relying on the RocksDB cache now. So we there are analysis of the work is in progress to to cache uh, the way to the cache the directories or the prefixes also we have uh, another work happening on the log management 
so now the the lock is happening on on the bucket bucket level so it's a bucket level is acting as a global lock so we can now the prefix id is in place so we can redesign the lock management using the prefix ids so we can move the locks to a specific directories of the prefixes so this work is in progress yeah so thanks everyone for the for listening the talk so please visit this roadmap ozone roadmap to understand what are the future work happening in the ozone community so you can reach out to mukul and rakesh in this apache account also feel free to drop mails in the dev community dev, uh, ozone community in the dev channel so we are happy to to help you in contributions yeah thanks thanks everyone